Let's take a run through problem 34A, another production report, but this time FIFO. FIFO method is a little bit more challenging, but I think you're going to be up for it. Here we go. Parodi Breaks has three departments. Its first department, the processing department, shows the following data for the month of May. Already, I have enough information to prepare a three-line title. Let's do it. Parodi Breaks. We are doing a production report. You don't need to note that it's FIFO. You can if you want. You do want to say the department though, processing department. And this is for the month ended May 31st. Okay, so there's a beautiful title. Now with the FIFO method, we need to keep track of how much work we did and on which units each period. And this method is more accurate than weighted average, but you'll see it's a little bit more complicated. First things first though, we do a very similar um, reconciliation at the top, total units to account for, total units accounted for, very similar with one little different quirk and we'll get to that quirk in a moment. I wanna highlight my units information. So units in process was 8,000. Uh, my units started 94,000, units completed 92, and my ending whip question mark. So that's my units information and my cost information, materials, labor, and overhead cost and beginning inventory, materials, labor, and overhead costs added. So Okay, those are my units and cost information. And just as we did before, like units at the top half, costs in the bottom half, but you can see this is a longer table, like uh, uh, there's more going on here. But let's get started with what we can do. Uh, units to account for from beginning whip. All right, so 8,000 um, units started during the month. Let's see, 94,000. That subtotals, of course, to equals that plus that, 102. And that's going to be my total units accounted for as well, just same as we would have done before. Uh, from Now, this is interesting. From beginning whip, it's like the same number we just did, 8,000, which is weird. That's different from what came before. If we look over at our weighted average method, it's completed, transferred out, ending whip. This is from beginning whip, started and completed, and ending whip. So it's, it is a little different, the um, units that we're tracking. Started and completed is totally new. Started and completed. It, it's none of these, right? It's These are started, certainly. That's true that this is started, but not completed. I started 94,000, but how many of those 94,000 did I complete? Well, the answer is not all of them because I got 92,000 completed and transferred out. And of those 92, eight were from beginning whip because FIFO, right? First in, first out. My first in, that makes sense. If I had beginning whip, I would have finished those 8,000 first. So of the 92,000 I completed, 8,000 had already been started. So 92,000 minus 8,000 equals 84,000 that I started this period and completed. That's what it is. So the math is you take the units completed minus what you already had started work in process. And that gives you the units that we started and completed within this period. And it is 84,000. That gives us the chance to calculate ending whip 84 plus eight is 92. Our total is 102. Our ending whip's got to be 10. Okay, so now we're looking for equivalent units and we're saying, I had mentioned before when we did this type of problem, I said, oh, just ignore the uh, percentages with our beginning whip because we don't need them. But when we get to FIFO, we're going to need them. Oh, we're going to need them now. But we'll save that one for last. Units started and completed. What percentage of the work do you think I did this year, this month? The answer is I did 100% of the work. So started and completed 100%. Ending whip, what percentage of the work did I do this period? Well, 90% and 60%. So that's pretty straightforward. 9,000, 90%, right? 90% of 10,000 is 9,000. 60% of 10,000 is 6,000. So that's pretty straightforward. The beginning whip one's a little bit tricky. How much work did I do this period? Well, if my beginning whip had 80% of the materials already in before I started the period, 
how many dollars worth of materials did I add? What percentage? I added 20% this period. Again, 80% was already done as of last period. I did 20% more this period. So I use the number 20% here. It's for work I did this period. For this 35%, I did 65% of the work this period. So those are the numbers I apply here. $8,000 times 20%. And uh, sorry, 8,000 units, I think I said dollars. I, oops, I'm gonna have equals, equals 8,000 times uh, 65%. All right, and so that's the only tricky bit, right? Started and completed, yeah, I did 100% of the work this period. Ending whip, well, whatever percentage you've got, you just apply it and it's very much the same as weighted average method. The beginning whip though, you're saying, how much work did it take to complete this product? And the answer is, well, if I had already done 80% of the work, I need to do 20% more. If I've done 35% of the work, I need to do 65% more. So how much more work needs doing, essentially, or how many more materials need adding? That gives us our total equivalent units, just summing that up, 94,600 and 95,200. And we're halfway there. The bottom has similar quirks to this. So again, you know, first time through, it can be a little tricky. When you practice this, though, it does become straightforward. Uh, this section, largely the same until we get to cost per equivalent unit. So uh, cost to account for from beginning whip. Let's see, it's one ten five hundred. Uh, labor and overhead, 33 plus 26, that's 59. 33,000 plus 26,000, it's our conversion, 59. Costs incurred, 964, 920. Uh, 333, 200 plus 190, 400. Conversion is 523, 600. And now I just need to add all the way around. 110 plus 59, 169. 964 plus 523. 1488, uh, 110 plus 964, 1075, big numbers here, 59 plus 523 is 582, and summing down there, uh, 1658020. Okay, so we've got our subtotals in place. Cost per equivalent unit is a little bit strange, and it's different this time. We're not interested in the cost in beginning whip because we accounted for that last period, right? We did the work last period. So we're saying, how much cost did I add this period to the amount of work I did this period? So it's cost incurred during the period divided by total equivalent units. And these are the total equivalent units I worked on this period. So it does make sense, but it is just different. So 964, 920 cost incurred divided by 946, there's 10.2, and 523, 600 divided by uh, 95.2, 5.5. Now the numbers worked out beautifully and evenly. They certainly don't have to. That's why I have that big long decimal in my Excel. I would expect students to be going to three or four decimals if it's a sort of long <laughs> decimal. Um, okay, so that's that's quirky and that's different right it's cost incurred during the period and when we did this for weighted average it wasn't cost incurred it was just total costs uh, a simpler more blunt force but this fifo is more accurate all right let's do costs accounted for now cost in beginning whip 110 500 59,169,500. That's not work I did this period, so I don't use this cost per equivalent unit because that's from this period. These costs are from last period. Cost to complete beginning whip, 10.2 times 1,600. Uh, for uh, conversion, it's 5.5 times 5,200. Uh, the total there then, 16 plus 28 is 44. Cost to complete units started and completed, 10.2 times 84,000. 5.5 times 84,000 and summing those together, 1.3 million. Total cost of units completed and transferred out. So it's our beginning whip and you can see the total cost to complete our beginning whip is just the first two rows there or first two columns, I guess. Uh, but the total cost of everything I completed and transferred out, so the beginning whip that I finished and transferred out, I can see them 
in the way. Let me uh, scroll down a little bit. There we go. Um, let's add these together. And we just add these three together. And we just add these three together to get our total cost of units completed and transferred out. And remember, that's a key number for our journal entry. We debit whip of the next department. We credit whip of this department for that number, 1533220. Uh, cost and ending whip, pretty straightforward. You take your uh, cost per equivalent unit times our ending whip. Cost per equivalent unit, 5.5 .5 times our ending whip. And I add them across. And there you have it. Now we just sum it all up. And hopefully, hopefully these numbers are matching what they should be matching. And they are. Take a look at this. That row, total costs accounted for, matches perfectly with total costs to account for. Certainly, it doesn't mean we got it right, but it's a very good sign. And if they're mismatched, it does mean we got it wrong. But there we go. A challenging problem. 348. There's another FIFO method example. Like I said, all things in accounting get easier with practice. So please uh, take a chance to practice this. And please practice hitting the thumbs up button. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.